Welcome. We're happy to see all of you at this webinar today entitled Growing Sales in Germany, How PR Helps Drive Your B2B's Visibility. I'm Peter Barron with Carabiner Communications in Atlanta, Georgia, and I will host the webinar. We're lucky today to have two excellent speakers. Jutta Lorberg is Senior Consultant and Company Officer with BSK in Germany, and Marlene Rieger, Field mar Marketing Lead in Europe for Gen Genentech. Following the webinar today, we'll be happy to answer your questions. Please submit your questions via the chat. See the button at the bottom of the screen. And here's what you can expect over the next 50 minutes. We'll be talking about the difference between building brand awareness for B2Bs in the US versus Germany, best practices for growing awareness among German speaking audiences, how to increase your company and product visibility in Germany, how PR can help drive sales in Germany and the advantages of partnering with a local agency. And now for the introductions. I'll introduce our main speaker, Laura uh, Jutta Lorberg, and she will then introduce me. Jutta is a communication expert with around 25 years of experience in the industry and is part of the management team at BSK, a top-notch German boutique PR agency. She has worked as a PR and investor relations consultant as well as an interim manager and spokesperson for corporations. She is a master graduate at the University of Göttingen in, with German and English majors and a journalism in mass communications and a minor. She is an exchange student or was an exchange student and assistant professor at CU Boulder and has worked with international clients since the start of her career. Thank you, Peter. Uh, um, and I have the honor of introducing you. Um, Peter has three decades of communication and marketing experience and is not only heading up Carabina, but is also the driving force for seizing new opportunities in the marketplace for Carabina's clients. Over the course of his career, Peter has directed campaigns for B2B startups, as well as for such well-known names as Apple Computer, Ericsson, GE, and IBM. He has received a bachelor's degree in journalism and PR from the University of Utah. And as a frequent speaker, Peter has delivered addresses and lectures at Emory University and Georgia Tech, as well as at uh, the American Marketing Association and the Public Relations Society of America conferences. So um, we're here to talk about the Dach market or especially Germany. Um, and the Dach market is considered um, a hub to Europe. If you look at the map, the yellow part um, marks the Dach region. Dach is the composition of the official EU country abbreviations for Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. You'll find those letters also on the car number plates. D stands for Deutschland, that's Germany. A stands for the Latin name Aus, uh, Austria, um, that's Austria in English, of course. CH stands for Confederatio Helvetica, that's also Latin, the Confederation of Helvetic People, and that's, of course, Switzerland. Main language in the Dach region is German. That's why the three countries are often addressed as one market. Germany has the largest population uh, with 83, 83 million people, followed by 8.9 million in Austria and 8.7 million in Switzerland. Germany is the strongest economy in the European Union and the fourth biggest economy worldwide, right after the US, um, China and Japan. As Germany is located in the center of Europe, it can serve as a hub to other European markets, whether you look at the Western European countries or Eastern European countries. Germany is a highly attractive market, but because of that, uh, also very competitive. And we want to give you some insights as to how to get seen uh, and heard in this market. We're good friends, but we have different cultures and, of course, also communications. One of the most interesting cultural differences between Americans and Germans is the way they approach things. This can be business or life in general. Americans, to my experience, just go ahead and do things. It can be an idea or a business model. They just try, and if it's, um, if it's going to work. And if not, well, they'll just try again um, with a different idea or business model. 
Germans, on the other hand, don't take that leap of faith. We love planning. We are the kings and queens of what if and worst case scenarios. We need to think the whole process through, need detailed planning, and are totally risk adverse. Very cliche, I know. I could top that with a saying, um, you need an American to invent things and a German engineer to make it work. But you get my point. This cultural difference has a huge impact on how you communicate with your audience in the different countries. In North America, product and corporate communications focuses more on emotional aspects. You've got a great startup culture, encouraging and funding founders to realize their ideas. Everything is big and bold with huge billboards shouting the message. User experience for product is key. You use comparative advertising and love superlative. Of course, your products are fantastic and your company is the global industry leader. Everything is possible and if at all, you are just experiencing minor issues. The German audience in comparison needs facts, facts and more facts. A product must be perfect until we dare to introduce it to, to the market. Our focus is on product performance. We consider it bad style to compare our product um, to a competitor openly and shy away from aggressive marketing. Where Americans see issues or challenges, we see problems. We are a nation of fact-driven, worrying nitpickers. So when you want to communicate with the German audience, there are four main rules you should follow. Build up a relationship um, to your target audience first. When your audience knows you, they tend to trust you more as if they don't know you. Promote your facts and figures, and of course, make sure that these are correct. Don't be pushy, and hard selling turns your German audience off. And last but not least, no bragging or boasting. Germans want to be convinced by facts, by an expert who knows the industry and or by third party endorsement. So the secret of successful business in Germany is to understand the point of view of the people who live and do business here. That's not new and not coming from me, uh, but um, one quite successful American businessman has said that once, you might know his name. I have brought you some examples which show quite explicitly the differences in addressing an American and a German audience. The first one is Ford a US company who has been active in the European and German market for almost a century, since 1925 uh, in Germany to be precise. So they know the market. On the left, you see a screenshot of the English website addressing the American audience. The headline reads an electrifying new experience. That's adventure, that's emotion. On the right side, you see the German website. The headline teases an uh, environmental bonus program and if you have a look at all the details below um, the teaser, um, below the teaser visual, you will find loads of facts and figures with regards to the car. Gas mileage, electric power usage, carbon emissions, all three numbers listed with regards to two clearly defined measurement standards. And boy, do we monitor gas mileage. I can tell you. One liter currently costs 2.04 euros. That equals around $8.05 per gallon. So that you know what we have. So um, we do, I've brought you another example. That's Miele. Um, it's a German company who's also active in both markets. And let's have a look at two promotional videos. And I hope you can hear the sound. Can you hear the sound? Yeah. In a kitchen, everything should work around you. Reflect your taste in every sense. The new Miele kitchen appliances are the perfect match for your every need. With intuitive technology designed around you. That's quality ahead of its time. Miele, immer besser. 
So that was the one, of course, um, for the um, for the American audience. Just a second. Um, and now the promotional video for the German audience. Stellen Sie sich vor, statt vieler Geräte über viele Jahre nur eines zu nutzen. Miele Produkte sind auf eine Lebensdauer von 20 Jahren getestet. Für perfekte Ergebnisse. Immer und immer wieder. Das ist Qualität, die ihrer Zeit voraus ist. Miele. Immer besser. Stellen Sie so. You see, once again, the company stresses emotion and design for the North American audience, a great experience in a kitchen with meal appliances. And the video addressed to the German audience, on the other hand, focuses on technical functionality and emphasizes the 20 years of guarantee. Both Ford and Miele have realized that they need to address their audiences in North America and in Germany differently to be successful in both markets. So how do you build up brand awareness and your visibility in such a fact-driven market with a very cautious audience, which weighs their options for every decision they take? How do you manage to become a thought leader for your industry here? Well, and that's why we're here today. And PR and especially media relations can be a huge support for you in this respect. If you manage to be mentioned in the respective media for your target audience, it automatically means you pass the invisible relevance gate. I won't bore you with um, communication theory, but the journalist as the gatekeeper has deemed you or your product so relevant that he or she is covering it in the respective publication. That's third party endorsement. Journalists are very important multipliers and your presence in the relevant set of media can help you establish yourself as a market expert or thought leader. Being covered in the relevant media can also help you to get in touch with potential new leads, partners or employees, not to mention an opportunity to use published articles for your corporate positioning on social media or for confirming your clients have made the right decision by sending out that piece in an email. So media relations are very important to get seen and heard in, in Germany. And to get covered in the media, you need B2B PR. So how does B2B PR work? Is it some obscure magic? Um, how do you make this work? First of all, you need market knowledge. Um, who is your audience? What are their demands and concerns? What kind of information do they expect? Then you need PR and marketing knowledge. You need to know which communication instruments work best for your target audience. For example, do you need a simple press release or a background interview or a byline article? You need to know which communication channels they're on. Trade press, mainstream press, LinkedIn, Facebook, or for example, the German business network Sing. Then you need to know exactly which trade publications they're reading and you must know what stories resonate with them. Then you tell your story, present your products and achievements to the B2B media journalist, or let your customer praise you in a case study, as we now know, of course, modestly in Germany. And this raises the awareness with your target audience, you get new leads and ultimately more sales. Why should you utilize B2B PR? As you've seen, B2B PR is a powerful tool to raise your awareness. Successful PR with coverage in the relevant media brings you and your products to the mind of the decision makers. This prepares the ground for future sales activities. Your audience has read something about you before. You are not a no name anymore, but you have been mentioned in a trustworthy environment. PR helps you to become part of the relevant industry community when the med media considers you a market expert and features you in an interview. So ultimately, PR helps you to build up brand awareness, but which is even more important in the German market, it helps you to build up credibility and trust. Pure brand awareness, let's be honest, it's just a matter of marketing budget. 
But gaining credibility and trust is a carefully orchestrated process to build up a good reputation in the industry with the media and that's the goal with your target audience. So what does the German media landscape look like? We do have two public TV channels, a bunch of public regional TV channels, as well as an abundance of private TV channels. If you're looking at B2B PR, TV is most of the time of lesser importance. B2B businesses are often uh, quite successful in a niche and known in their particular industry, but mostly they are not of public interest. Germany, however, has a very broad landscape of mainstream daily and business media. Around 2,300 newspapers and magazines, most of them print as well as online. Print is still very much alive here. Just to give you an impression, the New York Times had a, uh, has a circulation of 343,000 in two, uh, 2021. Süddeutsche Zeitung, that's a national German newspaper, has a circulation of 309,000. But there's also Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung with a circulation of roughly 200,000 and many more. The German business newspaper Handelsblatt has a circulation of 130,000. Uh, That's not far from the Financial Times in North America with a circulation of 180,000, although the US has more than three times as many inhabitants as Germany. And another specialty, we do have strong regional newspapers. For example, WATS, that's Westdeutsche Allgemeine Zeitung, which is distributed in the parts uh, of Northern Westphalia, has a circulation of 402,000. So that's way more than the New York Times. Even more mind blowing is our trade media landscape. We have trade magazines for almost any niche. Around 5,600 titles, again, print and online are published in Germany and they have a very loyal readership. I brought you some examples. So from IT to the building industry, um, medical technology, um, physical security, um, B2B fashion, uh, renewable energy, um, automotive. Um, we even have trade publications solely for service centers. That's for example, that call center Pofi uh, you see on the right. To be successful in the German market, you need to be able to navigate this broad landscape. You need to know which titles are indeed relevant for you. Um, but then you have the huge advantage that you might be able to reach your target audience, audience spot on, even if the respective title has just a small circulation. Trade shows are also a great means of raising awareness. Get in touch with your audience, your partners, and yes, the trade media. At a trade show, you will meet an audience that is fundamentally interested and ready to talk. This is where you establish contacts that you can deepen into valuable business and media contacts in the long run. Five of the 10 largest trade show corporations worldwide are German corporations. Germany is the number one trade show location for international trade shows. Here, once again, because we are located in the heart of Europe with easy access from the Americas as well as Eastern Europe and the Asian countries. Industry shows like the Hannover Messe, the International Automotive Show, IAA in Frankfurt, or the Anuga Food uh, Show in Cologne are known worldwide. Every year, one 160 to 180 international and national trade shows uh, take place in Germany with around uh, 180,000 exhibitors and more than 10 million visitors. Same here as with the media landscape, you would need to know which trade show in Germany is the most relevant for you to meet your target audience and the respective media. That's just an example how this might look like. Trade shows here are still very busy. Another German specialty are our trade associations. There is an association for almost anything in Germany, 14,000 and counting. Some of them are quite strong and have a real impact on public opinion and on politics. And certainly B2B organizations are a great opportunity for networking and getting access to the local industry community. So you should have a closer look at associations in Germany, which represent your industry to increase your awareness.
So um, how do we do that? Um, the media is facing similar challenges in North America and the Dach region. Publishers cut down resources and journalists have less time. The daily work pressure to get out a good story has increased significantly during the last years. The battle for attention in both regions is ongoing and becoming more fierce every year. This is why you need to package your information and service or as service oriented as possible with well research and crafted texts, delivering not just product facts, but also market insights and opinions, best practices and a compelling story angle. If you make life easy for the journalist by preparing your material in a journalistic, neutral, almost academic way, it raises your chances significantly to be covered in the media. And last but not least, Germans are human too. I mentioned that before, that's the trust aspect. Therefore, also a personal relationship opens the door for you. Some tips for gaining coverage. Um, to gain coverage in the Dach region, you should first identify the right media and the right editor, and then build up a trusting relationship. Your content offer um, should be on the point for the media's target audience, and you should be aware of the editorial context. When the issue is featuring physical security for airports, the magazine won't be interested in security measures for banks at the exact time. Very important, and I have mentioned this before, no bragging and boasting. It's okay to talk confidently about your strengths and achievements, but if you overdo it, it makes your company less sympathetic and the journalist might try to prove that you're not as good as you pretend to be. Don't expect coverage from a first meeting. We often get the question from clients why they haven't seen a full-blown article or interview after an editorial visit. Well, that's because an editorial visit is a means of establishing a relationship, talk about the industry and so on. So that when you have compelling news afterwards, you have prepared the ground. Never use texts which have been purely translated by a translation agency or even worse by Google or DeepL. Localization is key. Twisting and tweaking text to have a local angle and eliminate redundancies um, uh, or um, uh, eliminate redundant, as our journalists call it, marketing blah, blah. Be precise on your text. If you use numbers, name your sources. And last but not least, case studies are a winner. Let your client tell how great your solution is working. That's much more convincing for your audience. To put it in a nutshell, you need to convince the media and your audience with your knowledge and expertise. Start a dialogue with them. Most common communication measures include, for example, Press releases, that's still a great way of spreading the news. Byline and opinion articles, which show your market knowledge, expertise, and thought leadership. Case studies, which are a best practice example and third party endorsement in one. A corporate blog, where you could also reuse some of the ideas and thoughts of your bylines and opinion pieces. White papers, which are a great source for background information for journalists as well as for your customers. On a side note, make sure that this white paper really gives in-depth information as not just a marketing brochure. You could do um, webinars for journalists and or customers, but you might also do product demos for the media, organize a visit um, of a production site or a development lab. There's a bunch of opportunities to bring across your knowledge and expertise. The Dach region is German speaking, so you do have the challenge of the language barrier and you might ask yourself how to tackle this. Do you need a German subsidiary? Well, perhaps not from the start, but it's also a matter of commitment to a specific market to provide an invoice from a local legal entity to your customers. Same goes for your staff. Although most Germans learn English at school, latest from fifth grade on, still a lot of them are far from fluent. For your customers, negotiations in a foreign language are straining, and not all journalists are totally fluent as well. If you have ever been annoyed by having reached a customer service representative who barely speaks English, just imagine what a barrier this is for your customers 
or the media to only be able to speak to you in English. And coming back to the service orientation while working with the media, why should a journalist take the effort to translate your press materials when he has other options ready to go into the magazine in German? You might get away for longer with English materials and spokespeople in the I, um, ITC industry, um, but not in many other industries. It's a matter of showing commitment to the market by offering local spokespeople, uh, spokespeople and press material and collaterals in German. And now I hand over to my colleague uh, Marlene Riga. She is Senior Field Marketing Manager Europe for Genetech, um, a global leading provider of physical security software solution. And she will give you an overview of how Genetech managed to raise awareness in Germany since their start here in this region in 2016. Thanks, Jutta, for the introduction. Um, Peter actually asked me in the beginning where I'm based, so probably you can hear by my accent that I'm German and I'm uh, based uh, near Frankfurt here in Germany. And um, I joined Genetech a little bit more than four years ago. And um, today I have the honor to talk, to talk about how we managed um, to increase um, brand awareness for Genetech in Germany and how to improve the PR and marketing discipline. Who's Genetech? Um, Genetech is a Canadian software company with headquarters based in, um, in Montreal, Quebec. We have our European headquarter in France, in Paris, and it's a very, very dynamic, dynamic environment. We have currently above 1,800 employees worldwide. When I joined in 2018, we had around 800 employees. So you can see, despite the pandemic, we have um, um, a growth year over year for the company. Genetech provides a broad solution for the physical security industry, and our key products are for video surveillance, access control, and automatic license plan recognition. We serve in over 159 um, countries our customers. We are strong in different verticals, but to give you just a few examples, um, one is, for example, airports, manufacturing, mass transit, or retail. In 2016, BSK, so two years before I actually joined Genetech, BSK came on board as the PR agency for the German speaking countries. So as Jutta said, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. The main objective in the beginning for BSK was to make sure to position Genetech in the region as the export for physical security topics and to increase brand awareness. Until 2016, we almost have been unknown in Germany. One of the key strategies from BSK was, first of all, to check, OK, who's our key media? Who should we talk to? They managed to establish a regular contact, contact with them and also provide on a regular basis relevant assets and content to them. As a result, today, um, Genetech is very well known in the region. We have a very good relationship to the key publications and journalists, and we are also welcome guest speaker at industry events, and we don't need to play always the pay for presence um, game. On the next slide, you can see a few results from 2016. So we have over 110 in-depth binary articles and case studies. And case studies, I will talk about that also on a later sli slide. It's very important for a German audience. Um, we participated in a lot of trade fairs and events, and we generated over 560 high-quality clippings. You can see on the next slide that we managed to increase over 760% the number of generated clippings in the first year. And on the next slide, you can see that in 2016, when BSK joined, we managed to increase our yearly clippings from 5 to 38. In 2020, we have a peak, but that was also due to the reason that in March 20, um, Corona or the pandemic hit Europe, and Genetech managed to set up a digital fair as the first player in our industry within 
two or three weeks, and that generated a lot of clippings. In 21, we have lower clippings again, but that is due to the fact that um, because of COVID-19, we did not participate in any physical events or trade shows. Looking forward, we expect in 22 to have again above 100 clippings. The next slide gives uh, some examples where we generated clippings. Besides the print media, we also managed to be included in two TV stations, and we were really positioned as ex experts um, for that industry. And we had print clippings not only in the traditional security publications, but also in vertical press, for example, Nahverkehrspraxis for mass transit or Polizeiverkehrtechnik for governmental bodies and in channel media as well. One of the key learnings for us, first of all, in 2016, we didn't have a local spokesperson here, nor did we have any marketing resource worldwide that speaks German. That made it really, really difficult for, for BSK in the beginning to, um, um, to have local content. Germany is a very, very strong economy, one of the strongest economies worldwide. That means wherever you look, you find business. Uh, we got a little bit distracted in the beginning uh, in terms of focusing on one vertical, but that did not work out. So we decided to have a yearly commitment and a yearly strategy plan where we focus and that really worked out in the end. We had also in the beginning um, translations done by a US-based service provider. We have changed that uh, three years ago, and now we have a European translation, translation agency on board, and that improved, first of all, the quality of the translations, but secondly, also um, decreased the turn, um, turnover time for projects and translations. Besides PR and communication, it's also important to have a consistent calendar for trade shows and events. So just being present at one trade show doesn't make it. You need to make sure you go where your audience is. And as Jutta mentioned, we have a lot of trade shows in the region and also smaller events. That is a very, very interesting slide. I think the most interesting slide for our audience today. As Jutta said, facts and figures. I saw the communication coming from Canada, North America. It's very often quite fluffy and Germans love facts and figures. So be aware that you need to have a factual driven communication. Translation one one doesn't work. You need to make sure you localize your text by a local marketing resource. Um, I give an example. In North America, it's okay to address people or customers, channel partners with the first name. Don't do that in Germany. Address formally and with a last name. Case studies are key. Germans are very, very conservative. First of all, they like to buy from Germans, but they also like to get recommendations from, uh, from other Germans. That means if you have reference stories, make sure you leverage them as much as you can. A good relationship is also very, very important. And um, four key factors that are very important if you want to do uh, successful PR and marketing in Germany. You need to make sure your communication and PR efforts are consistent, predictable, efficient, and there's a long-term commitment. We managed to have a very, very good relationship to the media and the publications in the region because we are a reliable partner for them. That means they know we have a yearly investment with them, so we don't always have to play the pay for presence game. We also get byline articles, case studies, or speaker thoughts for free because we are a reliable partner for them. Last but not least, um, material in German. Um, if you don't provide documentation in German, your competitor will do that. So make sure you have that in place. And last but not least, social media channels. Um, as an example, in North America, you can do through Facebook um, social media um, to sell a B2B solution. That does not work in the German speaking countries. And also look at the local social media channels as Jutta mentioned, we have a business networking platform similar to LinkedIn, which is called Xing. So make sure you play the right channels. I worked with, with BSK so over four years, almost on a daily basis, and um, I never saw them as a vendor. They are like a team member for me. We have really successfully um, 
plan strategies, but also tactics in the region to make sure we can increase our brand awareness and also improve our PR practice in the region. Yudai, I think you need to unmute yourself. Now. <laughs> Thank you, Marlene. Let me quickly summarize the advantages uh, of working together with a local PR agency. A local PR partner builds bridges. Uh, it's our task as a German PR agency to make you aware of the cultural differences and to give you market insights. A local partner can provide insights on how German editors think and work. Uh, they can help you navigate the media landscape, the associations and trade shows. A local agency most often has already established relationships to key media and influences and can open the door for you. And a local uh, uh, partner is able to provide you with a local angle to your story, which might resonate with your target audience. Ultimately, a local PR partner makes, you, makes your life much easier because you don't need to learn how to do business and media relations in the DAF region the hard way. Just a few information, closing information on BSK. We're a small um, but impactful top-notch communication agency with experienced consultants. We've been in the market since 98 and our office is located in Willich, that's near Düsseldorf in the far west of Germany. We have accompanied more than 250 projects to date. Our focus is mostly B2B with broad experience in the ITC industry, but also have client experiences in finance, renewable energy, and many other industries. We get most of our clients by recommendation, and that's something we're quite proud of. We work together with our clients for many years, as we do, for example, with Marlene. Thank you. Um, we are part of our clients' teams and sparring partner in one. And we are a member of the International Plexus PR Network since 2002. Um, just a few words um, uh, about Plexus. Um, um, the, this webinar is the first of a series we are planning with Plexus to give companies around the globe market insights to different countries with regards to raising awareness and thus increasing sales. Plexus is a network of independent agencies. We work together by choice and because we deeply believe in local expertise. With some of the Plexus members, I've been working together for more than 20 years already. We know each other and know how our customers can benefit from a local PR partner in a specific region. If you want to find out more about Plexus, you can visit our website or get in touch with Peter or me. We'll be happy to tell you more about our collaboration. And one last quote to wrap it up. Um, if you want to be successful with your B2B business, think global, but act local. You have Peter's and my contact details in the presentation, which we will be happy to send you afterwards if you're interested. And now I would like to thank you for your attention and ask you if you would have any questions, any particular aspect you would like to hear more about, then please use the chat function. Thank you. Let me just jump into and, and add my thanks. This has been a terrific webinar. Thank you, Utah and Marlene. I've learned a tremendous amount and really appreciate your insights. Um, Marlene, that was really interesting to uh, get your emphasis of events. Um, I'm not sure that, uh, you know, the people realize that events have such a, an impact. Um, so thank you. Now, as promised, we'll, we'll answer your questions. There are a number of questions already in the chat. And so let me just uh, scroll up here and ask a couple of them. Um, this one could be either for Utah or Marlene and maybe both. Um, the question is, if I'm interested in further exploring, expanding into DAC, what are the logical next steps? Well, um... It's it's like in um, in every um, in every business you do you first have to um, look at the market potential. That's that's not PR. That's just purely um, 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 looking from a business perspective. So um, you you should have a, a look on the market. There are a bunch of um, 
industry um, analysts out there who, who look at the market and you know your competitors in, um, in your country. So have a look if those competitors are already in the market um, place in, in, in Germany. So um, if, if you have the potential um, and um, you uh, know that you want to dive in, uh, then you should, um, 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 as, a, as a next step, um, try to get um, um, some, um, I would say, some local flavor. Talk with um, industry um, people around there. Um, before you really dive into it. Um, I would uh, rather not just tackle that and in, in, in coming in here cold without having talked to uh, people. And it's a good uh, opportunity if you want to go to a trade show and, and do exactly that. There are a lot of people um, and you uh, at, at trade shows, which you can ask. Um, you could also go to the um, um, German American um, Chamber of Commerce and talk to people there. Um, there might be um, other um, um, uh, associations in your country who would give you some insights. Um, and then um, uh, you could start with a planning phase. And um, B2B PR is just one little brick in the whole building, uh, which you have to build up. Marlene, perhaps yeah. you would like to add something. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can add um, a few comments because um, we had a Genetech. Um, we didn't have any field team in the beginning in the region. And that made things not only for Utah, for PR, very complicated, but also in general. As I said, um, for Germany, you need a long-term commitment. And when you decide to go into DACH or Germany, you need um, to have somebody in the field, in the region, who speaks the language, at least on a very good or native level. I think that's very, very important. That's really good to hear. Yeah. So actually, this one kind of follows on with that. The question is, is there a way to conduct a pilot phase in DOC prior to a full on expansion slash investment? Well, um, I have, um, I'm, I'm pretty opinionated on that one, but because <laughs> um, um, I, I've seen that before and, and Genetech was actually a good example for that because Genetech had tipped their toe into the waters of Germany um, a few years ago. Um, and then they just left because well, the results didn't start to come in as they would like to have it. Um, and and um, the outcome was that when they decided to come back to Germany in 2016, they had to start all over again. So you have a double investment. Um, yeah. And that's not something I would recommend doing. So you'd, you'd rather uh, need to be sure that you really want to do that. And then you have to stick to it. I, I would um, really advice against the test phase. So do your research beforehand. And if you're uh, coming here, um, then it should be for good. I absolutely agree with what you just said. And uh, I mean, like I saw that at Genetech myself. And um, yeah, I think if you, we can see, for example, that we have local competitors, German competitors in the physical security industry, and their solutions are not at all um, as good as our solutions, but they do business because they have long-term relationships in the market. So be patient with a B2B product, give it two, two to three years before you see really sales and improvements and increase of business. That is what you need. And I can tell from a marketing and PR perspective, we see right now the consistency that we had with BSK over this last six years. We see that we outrun every competitor in terms of clippings quarter, quarter of, or after quarter. So be patient and be committed if you want to go into that region. Yeah, and, and just to add to that, um, uh, Germany is a tough market. We are hard to convince and hard to be won over. Um, so as Marlene said, you need to be patient. Um, and uh, if it's not um, uh, turning out the first year as you would like to, um, don't just go away again, because then you lose even more trust and it's even harder to get back. Yeah, thank you. Those are great. It's actually, this next question that goes with that, um, <clears throat> you, it may be difficult to answer. I know somebody asked me this uh, about the US, it might be hard, but what's the typical investment cost? and time frame for expanding. So I think you've already touched on the time frame in terms of uh, being committed and expectations to see results, but 
can you see um, any sort of typical budget that you might want no, to come no, in with? No, no, not really, not really. I mean, I could tell something about the budget for PR you would probably need, but um, not about um, a specific um, investment for a whole business because it's so different from industry to industry. It is, of course, um, a less, um, uh, you need less budget, of course, if you have like a, for example, software solution. But if you're in a, in a production industry um, and um, you need to have um, like uh, service people on the ground and stuff like that, it, it makes it much more expensive already. So um, there's just not one number I can I can give out to you, but um, in a, in a, um, in a very, um, B2B surrounding, just uh, to give you a number for B2B PR, um, you should look at least at something uh, between 45 and um, 65 to 70,000 euros per year um, and include um, uh, an additional budget for some um, advertising. Um, so um, as Marlene has said, some of the niche publications are pay to play. Um, but also uh, the other um, uh, trade publications, um, um, it, they are um, looking at you um, more favorable, I would say, <laughs> if you have an ad in their publication once in a while and don't expect them to cover you all the time without um, uh, being present also with, a, with an advertising. Okay, in great. That's good. Does so... Uh... And the time frame, um, um, Marlene has mentioned that. So give it at least two, th two three years until you expect the, the, the first real sales. And I would even say um, a plan for a five-year period. Uh, yeah. You are really good if you um, um, uh, arrive at a point after three years already, um, but give it five years. And um, you have to have a long um, a long breath, we call it. <laughs> and um, you, you, you need... Um, um, to um, uh, not to lose your investment, you need to plan ahead that you need that time frame. Right. So obviously the focus of the webinar is on uh, German speaking countries, the DAC region. Mm -hmm. But let's say if that's your, your first place that you come and then you think, well, I'd like to go into some other European markets. Is, is that, do I have to sort of replicate what I'm doing or, or would a German agency, for instance, be able to help in other parts of Europe? Well, I would recommend strongly to go also with a local PR partner in each of those countries. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I firmly believe in, in, in local expertise. This is why we work together also with um, local um, PR partners in, in other countries um, uh, with Plexus. Um, and we sometimes share clients, um, sometimes in just two or three countries, depending on the, the, the focus of the respective client. Um, but um, they know exactly which journalist to address. They know exactly which trade show to go to. And uh, they know um, how to localize a press release uh, and, and, and give uh, an interesting local angle to it uh, so that it resonates uh, with that particular audience. So um, yes, if you want to have very low key, you can put it on a PR newswire and send it out, but the results will be marginal. So, uh, and I, I don't believe in one size fits all for whole Europe. Um, we, are, we are not the US. These are totally different countries with totally different languages, totally different culture, and you need to address that. Yeah, and here again, Jutta, I can just agree on that one because I have, I'm German, but I have a European white mandate and I can tell you the, um, the PR practice in France or the PR practice in UK Ireland is completely different compared to DACH. And um, it's not only about sending out press releases in the local language, it's about building up relationships to the journalists and to the media in the region. And for that, it's good to have someone local like the marketing, internal marketing coordinator, but also the agency should be local. Awesome, great, that's a terrific response. So we're actually down to our last one minute. So, uh, but I think we do wanna ask this question that was uh, sent in by a chat. Should the current situation in Ukraine be a concern for companies expanding into DAC? Well, the situation in Ukraine is a concern for everybody right now. And, um, um, 
to be honest, it's it's hard to answer that question. Nobody knows uh, how the situation will develop and if the conflict will increase, and um, if um, any of the um, NATO countries would be affected by that. Then, of course, it will be a totally different game here. Um, well, let's say uh, let's put it that way. Um, if you are um, uh, a B2B company with a very um, energy um, driven um, production um, thing, I would rather say um, wait until that conflict is solved. Um, if you have like a uh, like an IT, uh, ITC solution or something which is um, which is easier to um, uh, to transport, for example, um, then uh, you might want to have a look at that um, and, and still expand to Germany. But um, I know there are a lot of insecurities right now. Nobody can really answer uh, how that whole situation is going to develop. The problem is if we stop doing business um, right now, um, that's also not a solution. So um, we have to, I think, plan a little bit around that and see what we can still do in that situation. And um, yes, we do have problems with the, um, with the supply chains here uh, in Germany as uh, many other countries as well. Um, there is um, uh, the, the gas and power prices which have um, gone up considerably. Um, those are all things you need to take into account when um, 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 uh, when thinking about your expansion plans. But um, that's what you would do if you would go to any other country in the world as well. So mm -hmm. you just need to do your homework, I guess. And we all should pray that that conflict will be solved very soon. Yeah, totally. Well, thank you. So let me uh, conclude the webinar and thank everybody for attending today. Um, if you have friends that you think would uh, like to listen to the webinar, we have recorded it. And uh, we'll make sure that uh, we send a link to everybody that was registered. Like uh, a final thank you again to Utah and to Marlene. You were both amazing and uh, really appreciate your expertise and your time today on the webinar. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much, Peter. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.